Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, on the one hand, a very exciting time <laughs> uh, when a player in Najee Marshall uh, has his two-way uh, contract converted to a multi-year deal. You're excited because a player who's done all the right things and has carried himself in a, in a warrior-like way, in a, in a true battler's way, um, creates opportunity for himself. And he sees the opportunities that, that our team gave him. Obviously, being shorthanded like we were, Najee played far more minutes than he otherwise would have. And I think what you've seen is we have a definite rotational piece and a young man that is willing to run through fire to win a basketball game. And that's exciting. Um, it's exciting for Najee that he's, he's set himself up in the way he has. Um, Didi Lozada signing uh, previously is another really exciting thing for us as a franchise. Um, it was two years in the making, uh, working very closely with the Sydney Kings. Uh, their front office and their coaching staff has been remarkable to work with. And we think the results in, in Didi's growth and development as a player are, are staggering, quite frankly. Um, and we're optimistic that he's going to be a, a focal point of our team and a key rotational piece moving forward. Um, unfortunately, given the injury situation we have, it might need to be much sooner uh, than later. Um, but again, it's exciting when a player like Didi who has gone through everything he has and taken the steps he has to ensure his own development uh, is rewarded in the way he is. So again, part of what you love about what we do. Um, tonight, unfortunately, we just released something that's very frustrating. And it's not part of what you love about what we do um, in the Zion Williamson news um, regarding his, his left hand. Um, obviously, Zion is left-handed. Um, so it's a fairly significant situation for him. Um, I'm really frustrated because this was avoidable. Um, we told the NBA through every means available to us, uh, through sending in film, through speaking to everybody in the officials department, everybody in basketball operations, that the way they were officiating Zion was going to get him injured. Um, and quite frankly, he's injured now because of the open season that there's been on Zion Williamson in the paint. Um, he has been absolutely mauled in the paint on a regular basis to the point that other players have said to him, I'm going to keep doing this to you because they don't call it. So there is more violence encouraged in the paint against Zion Williamson than any player I've seen since Shaq. Um, it was egregious and horrific then, and the same is true now. Um, I'm particularly disappointed in myself and our organization. We did a very poor job, apparently, of explaining in the proper sense of, with the proper sense of urgency how severe this situation was from a league perspective. Um, that's my fault. Um, this situation is very much something that should have been able to be avoided if we were protecting our players in the way that we should be uh, in the league. And this just was not done. So, again, I'm, I'm very disappointed that he's not going to be available um, here for the foreseeable future anyway. Um, but I'm more disappointed in, in, our, in us, uh, quite frankly, that we weren't able to bring the the appropriate sense of urgency to the league conversation around the way he was officiated. Um, Brandon Ingram uh, continues to work his way back from a left ankle inversion sprain that he suffered in the second Warriors game. I think many of you saw him leave the game. Um, that injury is going to sideline him indefinitely. Um, he's continuing to try to progress to play. Um, Brandon, similarly to Zion, is a player that is willing to do anything to play and to support his teammates. Zion has been playing with an injury to his other hand that every other player I've ever been associated with would have had surgery already and shut themselves down. And he's a player that wanted to be available to his teammates so badly that he played through an injury that, quite frankly, nobody else would have played through. And what, what reward he got for that was injuring the other hand in a way that didn't need to happen at all. And in order for him to even bring it to our attention, it would have taken something akin to getting hit by a truck. And for him to bring it to our attention, I'm grateful that we found it and we could avoid any serious injury. But with that, I'll, I'll take any questions you have. Hey, Greg, um, with the injury to Zayed's left ring finger, when did it occur? When did he uh, raise attention to you guys that it was hurting him? 
He brought it to our attention um, prior to our departure that he was still experiencing soreness in the hand. Um, Aaron Nelson and his team sort of rallied to make sure that we got the imaging necessary. Very grateful that Oshner was able to get him through the process and the timing that they did um, to reveal the injury. Um, he, I believe he probably suffered the injury um, over a period of time. Um, it's a striking injury and it's a force, it's a blunt force injury. So he was being beaten on the hand over and over and over again. So for me to tell you one time, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think he knows one time. Hey, what's up, Griff? This is Will. Uh, how, how, how much has this dialogue been ongoing uh, with the league? And, and we can sense the frustration with you. I, I guess what's their message been to the team as far as how he's been officiated? <sighs> <clears throat> So it's been ongoing throughout the year. Um, I've had multiple conversations with multiple individuals that run the officials, um, individuals that run basketball operations. Um, we've sent in films. So throughout the year, it's been an ongoing situation. Coach has actually had his staff sending in clips as well in an effort to uh, protect Zion throughout this time. Um, so it's been an ongoing effort. And again, I, I want to be clear, Will, and I appreciate the question. We failed. We, we did not protect him appropriately. We did not make the message clear enough because this was avoidable. Hey, hey Griffith, uh, Andrew. Um, I, I, know, I know you said it's hard to kind of pinpoint an exact issue, but I, I do remember him coming out in that last game. Uh, he subbed himself out, I think it was in the second quarter, comes back to play. It, it, do you think that might have been a de- for lack of a better term, the breaking point of, of, of when it happened, or is it, is it and something that just... Again, in, in fairness, Andrew, I, I can't say that. I don't think he could say that. It's, it's an accumulation of a ridiculous amount of contact that players were making him aware they were doing on purpose. <clears throat> um, Griff, one of the things that Stan has talked about all year is guys, guys who play the game the right way, who don't flop and fall down, they don't seem to be getting rewarded, and the guys who do flop are getting rewarded. How frustrating is that from y'all's perspective that it, that seems to be the case? Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Um, I think we have a problem as a league right now, and I think the league, to their credit, is aware of it relative to the imbalance um, in terms of the way the game's officiated. There's an enormous advantage for the offensive players that do a particularly good job of drawing attention to their contact Unfortunately, the way you do that is in an abnormal way. You do that through unnatural acts. Again, uh, guys, I'm sure you can sense how upset I am. Um, Zion does not have a technical foul all year. He was doing exactly what he was taught to do in terms of honoring the league's rules around decorum. He was respectful to officials. He was having conversations with officials using the language that the head of officiating told him to use. Brandon Ingram has met with the same director of officiating and had the same conversation and Brandon continued not to get calls. Um, People will tell you that it's a youth thing. They will tell you that it's a reputation thing. It's, it's, It's asinine is what it is and when kids are getting attacked in the way they are and in particular zion was this type of thing is going to happen and i feel to some degree there is an i told you so element of of what i'm saying to you right now um but yeah you're right if you flop you tend to get more calls and, and you mentioned, you know, the effort you guys had all season sending in the film, having discussions with the league. I mean, it's not like Zion's going to get any less physical. So, you know, what do you guys have to do at this point to, to kind of get the league, you know, on the same page where, where, he's, where you can feel like he's starting to get the calls he should get? So in non-COVID times, one of the things we do is we were able to, when Brandon first got here, Brandon was able to, he was playing at the time, um, he was able to visit with Monty McCutcheon and Kiki Vandeway in the league office. They were able to sit together and watch film. Brandon was able to walk through specific instances where contact was um, more severe than was being called. Um, 
and the league listened to that. And I think for a period, we had some success in, in getting a better whistle there. So in a non-COVID time, one thing we'd certainly do is facilitate getting everyone together in the same room. I think there's a total lack of understanding of what it looks like. Um, and I've heard officials say this to Stan. Look, the kid's a beast. He just brings about a bunch of contact. Okay, well, that, that doesn't have anything to do with what you're supposed to be calling. And I almost feel like they didn't know how to deal with someone so sudden and so strong. And so they sort of threw their hands up in the air. So I hope this is a signal um, that that's not what can happen. And we're going to have to have very real dialogue moving forward where we come to some understanding of what constitutes flagrant contact. And Brandon Ingram's been ejected from games for less contact than Zion gets on a repeated basis in the paint. Griff, was, um, was the non-call against Denver a tipping point for you? I don't think it was a tipping point other than the fact that it was as visible as anything could be, that it was an incorrect call and they knew it. Um, but in that particular play, um, Ed, you're, you're talking about a play where Brandon Ingram was ejected from a game for a play on uh, Roby from Oklahoma City where he allegedly had a wind-up, contact, and follow-through on the play. And the player went to the free throw line laughing and told Brandon that he hit him in the hair. And in that particular situation, you had wind-up, contact, and follow-through. And there wasn't even a foul called, let alone a flagrant or an ejection. So I, I cannot remedy that in any way or or make that make sense Ed. Uh, hey Griff um, two two quick ones for me uh, you mentioned the other uh, hand injury does that go back to when he, he missed the, a few games um, uh, I, I guess a few weeks ago about a month ago with, with the, the, the right thumb and then the second one is uh, I, I know you guys put in the release, he's out definitely in a treatment plan. Is surgery an option? Is that something that is still being uh, talked through at this point while you guys try to figure out what's next? I won't, yeah, I won't get into any of that. We've, we've got a lot, a lot of work to do before we can have that conversation. Um, you've seen him playing with tape on his hand, um, on the opposite hand. Um, and the fact that he's able to do it is just really a tribute to his toughness, quite frankly. Hey, David, this is Fletcher Mackle. Um, you talked about how Zion has handled himself. Do you all have discussions with him or internally about maybe handling himself in a different way? In, I know you said he's handled it as a young player in a respectful way and done things the right way. Do you all, does he have to do things differently to make sure that this doesn't continue to happen after something like this? Fletcher, I appreciate the question. We, we have to do a better job as an organization of, of speaking to the league in a way that makes them understand the level of urgency. As I said, Zion does not have a technical foul all year because he is respectful and he's the type of kid that's doing his job and he's doing what's required to win. And, and he didn't deserve this. Um, I think we'll come to some understanding of, of what language needs to sound like moving forward, but there's, there's nothing I would have him have done differently. Um, this, this is on us and this is on the league. Thanks, Griff, appreciate your time. Thank you, guys.